Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Postscript. My name is Dan Slagle, and I am here with Sully, who has just preached the second in our series that we're calling, Oh, Come, Let Us Adore Him. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Sully? Good. Thanks for having me. It was a great, great message. Thank you. Thanks so much for bringing a powerful word. And it has elicited uh, a lot of questions, so we've got plenty to talk about today. Uh, I've categorized them uh, just for... Uh, our purposes here into questions that come from uh, who is possibly a non-believer and okay. then those that seem to come from, from believers. Okay. Uh, the first from uh, a non-believer, what is the intrinsic value of approaching Christmas with a sense of awe and anticipation? Why, why should I care if I have that or not? Sure. Well, you and I were kind of discussing and I think that we all choose to serve and be in awe of something, mm-hmm. whether that is being in awe of a- achieving maybe a status or um, a certain level of income. We are all going to serve and strive to really be in awe of something. And so, um, you know, as someone who has believed in Jesus, what I would say is the value is that all of those things that we strive for that are earthly things are temporary. It's kind of like the boom box that I talked about today, that when we get them, when you ultimately hit them, you'll realize, wow, this really was not what I thought it was going to be. And then you'd go on to looking for the next thing that's going to satisfy. Sure. I was reminded of John chapter 4. Jesus is speaking to this woman at the well, and, and she is looking to be satisfied by something and, and he says everyone who drinks the water and she's kind of bringing her own um, thing that she's in awe of I guess you would say will be thirsty again but those who drink the water I give them will never thirst again indeed the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life and, and basically what he's saying is hey the offer that I have for you is eternal that, it, that if you follow after me this isn't going to keep you longing and searching for the next thing. You will be in awe, and, and what I have is worth serving and following. So it's soul satisfaction, I guess. Okay, so, uh, the temporal versus the eternal. Yep. Good, good. Uh, another question that um, comes from an unbeliever. You mentioned several things that might fill our lives. Busyness, anger, loneliness, image control. Am I a bad person if I feel these things? Are, are Christians immune to those feelings? I think I know some Christians who have exhibited these. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> some honesty there. Honestly, myself. Uh, you know, as I said, I myself have been distracted by busyness, um, certainly worry as well. And so I think one of the greatest examples of this is David. King David, who was referenced as the man after God's own heart, Mm -hmm. oftentimes he would write these psalms, and what you can see in them is just really brutal honesty of, this is how I'm feeling. And a lot of times it was worry, anxiety, uh, loneliness at times. In fact, I was reminded of Psalm 42, where he says, why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? I mean, he's in this moment of, where is God? And what I love about his response is he says, put your hope in God for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. And so I don't think that any of us are immune to feeling those thoughts and those feelings. The question is, where is your hope? Uh, Is your hope in those just being satisfied and curved or is your hope in your savior and your God? And so to to look at him and to focus on him. Okay, good, good. All right, shifting gears uh, to questions now that uh, apparently have come from believers Mm -hmm. related to the question I just asked, uh, should I feel guilty if I do have those feelings instead of the awe, the anticipation that you were describing? No, I wouldn't wouldn't say feel guilty. I think it's a a good thing to be able to self-assess and recognize those things and say, hey, I am a a little off here. I am focusing on these other things. So I don't think there should be guilt or shame. I mean, in Christ, if we're believers, 
we know that he removes that guilt and the shame. That's what he promises. And so I wouldn't say that you need to feel guilty about those things. It's, again, kind of going back to David of just saying, I know where my hope is, mm -hmm. and to seek it there as opposed to focusing on those other things. Yeah, I, I think that's especially true for um, those who are going through uh, a period of grief mm -hmm. over the holidays. Sure. Uh, they're probably not focusing too much on awe and mm -hmm. anticipation as much as they are just working through their own pain mm -hmm. right now. So that's, that's a good word. Uh, another question, what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? If I'm going to ask God for that gift, what should I expect to receive? Yeah, I love the back half of that question about what the outcome will be because I think, you know, we looked at Simeon today and he's really a perfect picture of that. We see this man who it says that the Holy Spirit was on him, that he was filled with the Holy Spirit and in his prayer, I think we see the outcome. First, I love that he addresses Sovereign Lord. He just recognizes who he is in view of the Almighty, um, that, that God is God. Uh, but you just see this man who he says, hey, I'm at peace. You can dismiss me now, which is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit we mm -hmm. see in Ephesians is peace. And so I think that's one outcome that you could expect. I also love his joy. I mean, you could, as you're just kind of reading his address, you can feel the joy. I mean, tears of joy, probably what were streaming down his face, this excitement of this is what I've been waiting for. And so I think the outcome you should expect would be the fruit of the Spirit that we see in Ephesians. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control. Um, I think that's the outcome that we would desire to see in ourselves and, and will start to see as ourselves if we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Good. Very good. Here's a, uh, a question from a family man. Do you have practical suggestions on things we might do to keep our children's awe and anticipation on Jesus despite the constant messages that focus them on other things? Sure. That is a great question, and I could think from my own experience uh, as a child, but I have never had kids, so I'm going to turn the table and flip it back to you as a man <laughs> who's got... Three kids, I think you could probably take that one a little better than me. Ah, you're a wise man, Sully. Um, so I think the key to that is, uh, first of all, to keep in mind that kids are going to be kids around Christmas time. They're, 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 you're not going to pull them out of that sort of uh, improper focus, if mm -hmm. you will. They're going to get excited about Santa Claus and gifts and, and, and all that sort of thing. Um, that's not to say that we shouldn't bring their focus back to Jesus, but I think we do need to be understanding of their level of developmental maturity. The bigger answer, though, that I would offer is we shouldn't wait until Christmas mm. to begin uh, suggesting the uh, interest in the awesomeness and the beauty of God. That really should be a year round sure. sort of thing that we're doing with our children so that when we do encourage them at Christmas time, it's not like they're hearing it for the first, first time, time, which is going to diminish our chances, I think, mm -hmm. considerably. Uh, we need to be doing it uh, every month, every week of, of the year. Yeah. And then uh, when Christmas rolls around and they do get off track and uh, do begin to behave like kids, we can take comfort in the fact that, hey, you know, for the other 51 weeks of the year, we've, we've drilled that message home. So sure. it's, it's not being lost yeah. there. That's good. Good yeah. work. Thanks for fielding that one for sure, me. Sure, man. Glad to. Uh, so uh, last question, why is being filled with the Holy Spirit something that I have to do more than once? Why does it seem to wear off and I have to ask again to be filled? <laughs> Something I've talked about with you, this is just in leadership in general, we talk about vision leaks, mm -hmm. that it's a, a bucket with holes in it. And so if you're not constantly refilling the bucket with vision, there's not going to be any vision left in the bucket. And I think it's similar with us that our lives, because like you said, all throughout there are things constantly diverting our attention away from what is truly important, where our focus needs to be. And so when that happens, the vision leaks. And so we have to constantly be refilling ourselves uh, and pouring in. I think spending time is a huge one. Uh, that, that was something for me in this busy season that I just realized, 
man, I, if I'm honest, I'm not sitting down and devoting time to the Lord mm-hmm. to ask Him to fill. And if you, you know, listening to KSBJ radio isn't always going to be enough. Right. We need that all, you know, our own time to sit down and be reminded of uh, who God is and uh, to let Him speak to us and refill us and refill us, especially if you're in a position where you're pouring out. Uh, because not only does the vision leak on its own, if you're offering it to others, which is believers, that's the great commission for us to do it, uh, then it does go away. And so I think just that time of, of, of really stopping and saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to sit down and, and be still and know that you're God and, and allow him to come and fill you. I think that's what I would offer. Yeah. Uh, I would add to that uh, the relational dynamic that exists um, I think about my relationship with Becky, my wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I told her that I loved her the day we got married. Uh, she has wanted to hear it Again. many times since then. Yeah, uh, e- even though we live together and you know are often focused on the same thing, still we have to have those times where we reconnect mm-hmm. and we reaffirm our love for one another and sort of refill our lives with each other. And I, I think a similar thing is going on there with the Holy Spirit. Sure. Yeah. That's a good word. Thanks for sharing that. Sure, That's a man. good addition. Sure. Thanks for a great sermon. Thanks. Appreciate it very, very much. And thank you for joining us. Hope you have a very Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time on Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.